try to prep as much as I can. Um, so that way, you, when this is mounted in there, it's not so tough of a job. It's very easy on the bench to work like this. It's not so easy when you're sideways over there. So I'll, uh, I'll definitely explain more of this later, guys. Um, it's just too, uh, too much stuff here and kind of all over the place to actually give you a, tell you what all this stuff is going to do here. So Oh, that's hot. When they ship stuff like this, they'll put like a coating. So this is, this is the whole bus bar I, I ordered here. And uh, they'll put an oil coating on all this. So I want to clean the surfaces, make sure there's no burrs, clean it with alcohol. So I got my pads there and the alcohol here before I actually physically bolt it on. So I'll be right back. So I'm also cleaning the uh, contact points on my distribution block just to make sure there is no oils or anything else like that on it. Same thing, I'm gonna take a little bit of emery cloth and just give it a little bit of a, just a little, little rub like that on the, on the contacts, surfaces, like that. And take my rubbing alcohol, give everything a nice wipe. Make sure the grease from everything, including my fingers, are gone. So guys, whether you're using a lug or a bus bar like I am, do not put anything between the bus bar or your lug and the fuse. Don't put a washer in between the two of them, right? You want those two surfaces to be clean and those two contacts made. That's where your current's gonna go through. Make sure you do not put anything between them. Flat washer on top of the fuse, lock washer, then the nut. Is a thousand amps rated. So, um, well, I don't know if you can see that on there. Probably can't see that. Uh, yeah, can, I don't know if you guys can see that there. So it says 1,000 amps right there. Don't know if that's even coming up. And then there's a distribution block I'm using, uh, 1,000 amps. So all this is high quality, high end stuff. I'm not, uh, not messing around with this stuff. So then this is gonna get bolted onto there like that. So I'm done the uh, kind of the prep work of the uh, board. And obviously when I'm done uh, wiring it all, um, I'll show you the whole thing inside and what it does and everything. There's Stormy having a little nappy nappy. Oh, did we hear something? But anyways, I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to show you one here. So I'm making the jumpers right now that are going to join the batteries together. And once they're in there, I'll, I'll explain how you hook up the batteries. But I'm just going to make one, one uh, jumper here and show you how I do it. And I use a hydraulic press, which is the best way. So I'll do one here and then so that way, you know, you don't have to see every single connection I've made inside that unit. Okay, guys. So this is going to be my uh, negative wire that's going to parallel my batteries together. So I'm going to, uh, it's the same red wires what I have in there, so I had to actually wrap it with phase tape because I'm not, I didn't have any two watt cable. And I forgot to mention that it's two watt cable coming off my batteries to the rest of the distribution. So I just did a layer of black electrical tape over it. Anyways, um, you, you, you'll see people say about buying these strippers for wires and stuff like that. And, Obviously, me being an electrician, and I've done this, like, a, I can't even count how many times I've done it. I've always used a knife. But, I mean, if, you, if you're not used to stripping wires, then yes, purchase a wire stripper or whatever. But I use a knife, and I'll just show you. And I do it by feel, because um, you don't want to go into the copper. There's very, very small strands in here. So the last thing you want to do is dig in too deep. But I just know exactly how it should feel. So I'm just going to get, uh, and you'll see when I peel this off. because I have to use the side cutters. So as I'm, as I'm grabbing this insulation, I can actually see that I'm ripping the insulation. Like I didn't even cut all the way through it. So I'm, I'm peeling it right there. I, you can see how I'm peeling it. And then I'll show you, I don't know if you're actually gonna be able to see this, but you can see where it's actually ripping apart. 
So see how it's ripping apart? So that means my knife dis See how the insulation is being ripped? So then I know that I didn't actually cut the copper. So there, there's my copper stripped. So you want to use 100% copper. So this is a 2 watt, 2 watt lug to 3 8 stud. It's 8 millimeter bolts on the top of the, uh, on the, top of the uh, batteries. <coughs> so the, like I said, these are going to join the negative to negative. So what you want to do is this cable naturally wants to lay like this because it was coiled, right? So I'm going to turn this lug so it's like that, right? Then I'm going to, so this is a hydraulic press. So I'm going to show you. Now, of course, the press, this press here, I bought off Amazon, and it does pretty well, but it doesn't have every die that you need. So sometimes you have to, uh, work with it and then I'm going to release it and I'm just going to go and release it a little bit more right there so that's what it looks like guys now, sometimes, as you notice here, sometimes it leaves a little bit of a, a burr up on the top here. So what I'll do is I'll just either take my X-Acto knife because it's only copper and it doesn't take much to actually clean that off. Or I'll just go over to the grinder and just give that a little touch so when I put my heat shrink on, it doesn't cut in the heat shrink. But that's what you want there. That's a mechanical splice and that's what you want. That is extremely tight. Okay, so I'm going to go now do the other side here. So what you're going to notice here, as I'm pulling the insulation off, you can see I'm tearing the insulation. And that goes, there goes the propane tank. So you can see I'm tearing the insulation. It's not falling off. So therefore, I know that I'm not cutting any of the copper wires off. And you can see it being torn there. Right? So I know for a fact I didn't cut any of those copper wires off. And if, uh, if, if you've done it as many times as I have, you, you, you can feel you know the knife, you know the, the wires, you know exactly what you're doing. But if you don't, then yes, get, get uh, some proper uh, splicing or stripping tools. Okay, so like I said before, this is going to sit on the battery like this, right? This is going to bolt to the post. So what you want to make sure is your lugs are phased. So see what that lug's doing right now? That's not phased, right? Because one's this way and then one's the other way. So you want to make sure you rotate that so they're both in phase with each other, just like that. Does that make sense? So you don't have to try to twist this wire and make it go somewhere it doesn't want to go. You want to make it just so it rests like that. Okay, so now we're going to do this side. Tighten that. Release. Release. There you go, guys. Now all I have to do is put some uh, heat shrink over top of that which I gotta go in my heat shrink container and get some, I don't have any more on the bench. But that's it, so did I do the other one? Uh, yeah, here we go. So there's my, uh, the red one I did earlier. And I thought, well, I was, I, I was halfway through this one and, should, and I thought, oh, you know what, I should actually show, them, show me doing one of them. 
because um, you don't need to see me do every single one. That's, that's extremely boring. So anyways, I'm just going to clean up this one edge here. Needs just a little bit of shaving off that little corner there just so it doesn't uh, dig into the uh, insulation. But uh, yeah, that's how you, uh, you do a crimp, mechanical crimp. That ain't going anywhere. I hope so far you're enjoying what I'm doing here with the electrical uh, side of this. Stormy always helps me out, keeps me company. Right, Storm? <laughs> what a good... So before I actually put the batteries in the camper, I'm going to go and explain all the parts and everything and what they do and, and the layout. Because uh, once the battery's in there, you'll see it's, it's going to be fairly uh, tight. So once I'm done explaining this, I'll install the batteries and then show you how I hook up the batteries and everything like that. So, okay, guys, this is the battery compartment here. So there's my, uh, I, I got two pieces of also half inch insulation that the batteries are going to sit on. That'll give a thermal barrier and then also protect, uh, give it some cushion, right? Okay, so let me start here. This uh, red wire you see here, this is going, this red wire here is going to be the positive coming off my battery. Um, it's already mounted here because it goes to the back of my disconnect switch. So this is almost, this is a distribution and kind of picture this as a uh, your electrical panel in your house, okay? So the 12 volts comes up here to a disconnect. The disconnect is actually bolted right to this bus bar. And on the bus bar, I have one circuit here. There's a 300 amp fuse that's going to this disconnect that feeds down to this power block here. The negative is on this side over here, goes to the negative power block. This is parallel runs heading to the other side of the camper where my inverter is. So if you notice, I brought the bus bar off this switch to this screw here, and I put one wire on one side of it, one wire on the other side of it. The negative goes to this bus bar. If you notice, I bring it down to one bolt here. One wire goes on this side of the bolt, one wire goes on this side. So the bar is in the middle and the wires are on the outside. The bar is in the middle, the wires are on the outside. So these are one aught cables. Parallel runs of one aught cable to the other side of the camper. This is a two aught cable. The negative coming from my batteries goes up to here, and this is called a shunt. So the shunt actually takes readings of your battery condition and everything like that. So it goes onto this side. It says right there, to battery minus. So the wires coming off the batteries will go onto here. This is also a bus bar. Now, wherever I can use a bus bar rather than a chunk of wire, I'll do it. It's far, far superior. So there's a copper bus bar right there that joins to the negative part of my distribution. So that's where the negative comes from. Positive is on this one, negative is on this one, and this is where the connection to the fuse is. The next fuse is this one right here. It's a 100 amp fuse. It comes from, goes onto this wire to another bus bar where I have circuits here, and these are breakers. These are breakers that when they trip, I have to reset them. So like for instance, this one's for the uh, happy jacks for my jack system. There's also one for the fridge. This, is, this one goes to the main 12 volt distribution in my camper here. And this one here, you can see the red wire coming off the bottom up to the top of this. This is the small distribution blocks with fuses in it. I also installed this. So these are other circuits. When, when I bought the camper, all they had was one bolt and they just had all these under one bolt. And I didn't like that. So each one's on their own separate circuit now. And then this small little red wire heads over. And this one is actually going to feed the lights here in this compartment and the one above my head here. So I've got LED lights that I put in here, which I can show you later on. So that's basically the distribution there. It looks complicated, but it's not really that complicated. This unit over here, this is kind of like a miniature computer here. So what happens is you can see this little black wire coming off the top. It comes off the shunt here. So this, from the shunt, it goes in this black wire over to here. And then this goes to a display and that's how I know what's going on. So this is this is kind of like the uh, the hardware, like the, the, the hardware of it. And then this is more takes that information and turns it more into a software part of it. What else can I tell you about this device? So that's kind of like this. It looks complicated, but it's not really that complicated, guys. Like I said, you got 12 positive coming in here to the top of the bus, 12 negatives on the bottom. We have branch circuits coming off goes up to this bus bar. We have branch circuits coming off these breakers. This is my 12 volt common for this circuit. And that's, that's basically it. It's not that, it's not really that complicated. It looks complicated, but it's not guys. So on this side over here, I'm hoping you can still see this. This is for my solar panels that are on the roof. 
So the solar uh, wires come in from the roof. They go into this breaker here and it's off right now. So I, when I shut this off, there's nothing coming in from the panels. I turn this on, the voltage now comes across and goes into my MPPT. This is a sh solar charge controller. So right there where it says PV, the solar panels, and then off this goes to the battery. So from the solar panels, goes through a breaker into here. Off of here, it says to batteries, they go down into this breaker here. This is a 30 amp breaker. It goes all the way up around and that's the wire right there. And it goes right on to my positive bus bar. The negative side of my MPPT comes around and you can see it, well, I don't know if you can see it, but it's bolted onto the load side of my shunt, not the line side. There's only one wire on the line side and that goes to my battery. So from the load side, it's bolted on here and my positive is bolted on here. And that's basically the solar uh, uh, charge controller. It also, uh, which is not here right now, but the cable's coming, it also has the same cable as this guy here that goes over to this, this box here. It's gonna come, also come over and then from my, uh, from my display, I'll be able to tell exactly what's going on with my solar panel. So basically that one, this one box will tell me how much power is coming into my unit, how much power is leaving, what condition my batteries, batteries are in, and everything like that. It'll, it'll give me a history of when was the last time my batteries were fully charged and all that kind of good stuff. So that's basically it, guys. Although it looks like a lot of stuff, it's, it's really not that complicated. Um, the only thing I can suggest is keep it looking very, very neat. Um, it's a lot easier to troubleshoot later on if you have problems. And again, the, the more times you can get rid of a wire and use a bus, you're far better off to do it. So there's, like I said, there's one bus I use there. There's another bus coming down into this unit. There's a bus going down to the negative down here. And then there's a bus coming across that joins all these breakers. So like I said, the, the more times you can use a bus, it's far superior than a crimp. So anyways, uh, that's about it that I want to talk about in here. So I'm going to uh, go now and I'm going to put the batteries in and then I'll show you when it's totally done. All right, guys, I'm hoping you're going to be able to see this all right. It's uh, time to make the connections to the batteries. So let me, uh, let me just perk myself down here for a little bit. Um, the first thing is first, make sure your master, which is this is the one here is the master one, make sure it's in the opposition. Now there's a lot of current on these batteries. So when you're moving these cables around, be extremely, extremely careful. Um, if you want, put caps on them or something to do each one at a time so that way you don't uh, hit. But uh, I'm going to be okay. So when you're connecting more than one battery, these are going to be connected in parallel. So the negative gets connected to the negative of that one. The positive gets connected to the positive of that one. But when you come off these batteries, your positive goes to one battery. Your negative feed will go to the opposite battery. Do not put your two main feed cables both on the same batteries and then just join the two batteries, okay? So in other words, this is my negative going to my system. It's gonna to go to this battery here. Then the jumper gonna go from this battery to this one. But my positive, my main positive, is gonna to go to the positive on this battery. Then the jumper will go between the two batteries. Does that make sense? That way they, they share as best as possible. Uh, and something else that I uh, liked about the Battleborn batteries is they actually have a bar that comes up out of the battery. Instead of a, a post like this, it's a bar. So if you have more than one connection on there, you can put one on either side of that bar and then put the bolt through. That to me is the best way of doing it. These obviously just have one post. So my main, my main, so when I say main guys, I'm talking about the main feed going to my system. It's gonna go against the post. Then the jumper will go from on top of it to the other post. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second here. So I lightly sanded all my, uh, all my uh, lugs out on the bench and I'm just gonna get them all wiped down with, uh, with um, uh, rubbing alcohol just to take any oils off of them or anything else, clean them up as, as best as I can. And then I'm going to start making the connections. Now, this is going to be my positive from the, from this, from, <laughs> let me try that again. This is going to be the positive from the batteries to my system. So I want the, I want that fuse. So if I can remember where there is. So this is called a terminal fuse. So what you see here, and I'll take it apart so you understand what I'm talking about. Let me get all the goodies off. 
So this is an actual fuse. So the two surfaces, so this one here and this one here are only connected through a, a fuse right there in the middle. So this is going to sit on this holder. And as you notice on there, you see the bolt, but you see that piece of rubber that's going to isolate. That's going to isolate. So that will go on here like this. And this will bolt to the top of my battery. Then my leads will get put on the top of this post, the stud here. That way, these wires from here all the way to the, on the top of this bus here are going to be protected by this fuse in case something happens, right? Always want to make sure, guys, everything is protected as much as possible. So you know my branch circuit here, I don't even know if you can see that, guys, but I showed you already. It's got a, a, a 300 amp fuse that goes over to the inverter, but really there's nothing protecting the top of this bus. There's nothing protecting the switch or there's nothing protecting the wire. By having this here, as soon as it comes off the battery, everything in the whole system is being protected. Okay, does that make sense? So I've got to stay, I'm, I just sat down here so I could talk to you guys, but I can't do any work by sitting here. So I have to stand back up again. All right, let's clean off the connections. Uh, the terminals and everything, and let's start making all our connections. In case I didn't mention this, guys, these are all 2 watt cables. The other jumper. See? Get a fresh pad out here. So this is my main negative feed cable. And my positive main feed cable. Okay. So I am going to now mount this here, and this is my fuse. So I'm gonna mount this to this battery because that's where my main's gonna get attached to. Uh, so guys, you wanna make sure that there's no washers in between your mounting surface, which is the, the uh, these posts, and your lugs or this terminal, okay? So you want them to go right against there, and then you put your washer and lock nut up on top. So we'll just get that started. that what I'm going to do guys I'm just going to attach everything and then I'll come back with the socket and then uh, give everything a, a snug fit so our negative main is going to go to this one and our positive main is going to go to this one right right so let's go negative first so there's that guy and then this will sit flush on top like so mm -hmm. the bolt So, then our negative onto the other side. So we got our flash washer, then a flat washer, then our lock washer, and then the bolt. So that goes to that negative there. I think you guys can see all this. I'm hoping you can. Right, so there's our main going to our first battery, negative, to the other battery, negative. Then we are going to take our positive and put it on that guy there. And with our lock washer and flat washer, we will attach it. Now our main. So we first put our fuse on and you'll see a little filament in there. That's the uh, fusible um, link that goes between this surface and that surface. And if there's a short, that will burn out. So we're going to slide that 
I'm going to put it sideways like this. That way I can look in the cabinet here and see that fused link and know right away whether I have a problem or not. Then this is the main. It goes on first. Like so. Then the other one on top of it. And we're going to put our flat washer, our lock washer, and then the nut. And I hear choo-choo train. There, how's that look, guys? Does that make sense to you now? Right? So our battery, our main negative is on this battery, and our main positive is on this battery, and then we jump the two of them together. That is it. I am going to now take my socket here. And again, guys, be careful. You do not want to touch these two across here. You will have a light show you'll never, ever forget. If you live to talk about it. So I am going to be extremely careful. Let me do it from the outside here so you guys can see better. Okay. That's good. So what I plan on doing, guys, too. Sorry, I just got to listen. have a feel I should say um, what I plan on doing guys is after starting this system up and and then putting it under some good loads like I'll turn the inverter on and and plug something in that's going to draw some current I'll take my heat gun and I might have even mentioned that already I'll just get my heat gun and do some system checks I'm gonna say that's good now, obviously I can go in the book and do my torque specs and everything like that. I'm just going to wing it. All right, I just want to check this one here one more time. Good. And the top. Okay. There we go. There we go, guys. Yeah, too bad they don't uh, they don't come with a plastic cap that will cover all of these. Like, I mean, even this one here doesn't have something, but I'll maybe keep my eye out or come up with an idea. Anyways, guys, that's the connections. Does that make sense? So, how about we turn this bad boy on? Well. Oh, my fridge came on. There's the lights in the camper came on. Oh, there we go. Some lights down there. Lights up here. So like I said before, guys, these are my uh, LED lights, and there's going to be a door switch put in on the doors here. So that's for the uh, compartment down here, and then this one is up here, and that one will be for the hanging closet up top here. So guys, that's the, uh, the end of the uh, battery installation. I just got to put the uh, door back on. All right, guys. Let me uh, now take you over to the other side here to where the inverter is. Now, if you watched the last video, which I'm sure you've all watched my last video, um, I explained the DC to DC uh, charger, right? That goes up, uh, gets plugged into the uh, front of the uh, truck comes off the alternator and charges it. So the rest of this stuff here, I'll just do a quick little overview from up top here and then I'll talk about stuff at the bottom. This little guy here that you see, that's actually a thermostat. And there's settings on here that you you set your set points and then there's a little relay, relay inside there that'll close. And what that is for is for the compartment temperature. Um, because once this inverter is running, it might get fairly warm in here. So I'll show you that once I lift up this lid. So this is another fuse right here. And it's an also a 50 amp fuse, just like this one. It's a 50 amp fuse that goes to the uh, charger. This is for a small a 12 volt distribution panel here. The reason why I put this in was is for two reasons. I, I installed this switch up here, these switches. And... What, how it came when I bought this off Amazon is on the back side of this, there was all these fuse holders. So if, if one of the circuits here on your switch 
um, shorted out, it would it would blow the fuse. The problem is, is every time something like that happens or whatever, you you'd have to unscrew this and pull it out from the wall and stuff. And you know what? It, I just said no, I'm not doing that. So, in my bright wisdom, I I picked up this panel here, and if you see right here, it's I don't know if it's easily seen, but it says. SW1, which is switch one, switch two, switch three, switch four, switch five. So from here, it comes off the fuse, goes up to the switch, comes all the way back from the switch onto here. And that, that's the load side of that switch that are up on the wall here, okay? That's the load side. So the line side and the load side. So there's one wire coming up from the fuse and the other one comes back as a switch leg to this terminal block right here. And on here, you see load one, two, three, four, five. That's the switches. So, switch number one, it says USB. So what I did is I took that first switch, and if you're gonna watch right here, I'll turn that on and there you go. It says right now my batteries are 13.3 volts. I got a 12 volt charger there. I, uh, sorry, 12 volt cigarette charger there and USB charger. I put them on the first switch and the reason why I did that, believe it or not, is at nighttime, I even find this too bright. I'll actually wake up because of it. So I put it on a switch. So right now those chargers won't work and you can see the light goes out. So that's what's on switch one. And, <laughs> and anyways, so switch two, three, there's nothing on those two switches, but you see four and five switches are these two wires. What are they, you may ask? Those are my floodlights on the outside of the camper. Okay, remember those floodlights on my, um, on my boat rack up top? So this switch, turns the switches on that side. And if I shut this light off, you'll see them shining. Let me shut the light off. I'm gonna turn them off and I'm gonna turn them back on again. So that's the that's the uh, two floodlights on this side of the camper. This switch is for the floodlights on that side of the camper. So that way I, I don't have to have them both on. I can just turn two on at a time. And you can see the lights reflecting over there too. So that's what I did there, guys. And there, again, like I said, in case something happened and I uh, had a problem with, with uh, either a light or a wire, I blow the fuse right here and I don't blow the fuse inside that wall cabinet. So that's what I did. And then if I want to run something else, it's pretty easy just to put them underneath these screws rather than fishing them up the wall. So that's what this is all about. So And so the, this guy here, which are two fans, they're actually fused by this wire right here. You can see this top fuse here. So I got these fuses. Uh, there's nothing on the bottom one here and then the one at the top there. So that's basically what this unit is here. So let me open this up and show you what's down below. Okay guys, this is the inverter. It is a 3000 watt and it says Sun Gold Power. And this is a pass-through inverter. In other words, so my 120 volts from shore power, whether it's a plug-in from a pedestal or my generator, goes directly into the inverter, which is on this side here. And the other cable goes over and goes into my panel, my 120 volt panel that's on the camper here. And the reason why I got this uh, inverter is because it has a built-in charger also. So it'll charge from 20 amps to 90 amps. So as you can see right here, and, and trust me, you won't be able to tell because it's even hard for me to see, um, the, in the inverter's off right now. So it's actually on number six. So number six over here says open lead acid. That's what was on the camper. I need the one below it. It's lithium phosphate, so, which is number seven. So I have to click it over now because I got new lithium to number seven. There, we're on number seven. So this is how this wire, guys. I have parallel runs of one-aught cable, which you would have saw on the other side, right? And I also have my battery um, DC, DC charger on the same studs. So when my battery charger is on, it also takes the two one-aught cables then will take the charge back to my batteries in the other compartment. And this is how I ran them. These, these are more TAs, just like I showed you in the camper when I did the uh, DC-DC charger. That's just a TA that I cut off the throat off of it and put a lock nut on it. And I use that as, as um, grommets. So that's basically it. And those uh, wires right there that you see coming through, those big, these, these are my DC-DC charger. So right on the other side of this, uh, going to the outside of the camper is the plug that you saw me uh, put on there. So this is the, like I said, this is the 3000 watt inverter. And 
So that little thermostat up top here, that little lighted box, it, there's there's its sensor right there, and I just taped it, and I found out that when this inverter's on, that this is the warmest part of the inverter. So if this compartment here gets warm, there is a built-in fan on this unit here, and it blows in this direction. So what I also did is I actually put two six-inch fans. So there's one cut there, and whoop, sorry guys, and there's one at that side. So if this compartment hits a certain temperature, which I set it at 28 degrees, those two fans kick on. So the, it, it pulls, this one pushes air into the compartment and this, this one pulls it out of the compartment. So that keeps this compartment cool. And I've heard it come on before and then I've heard it shut off. So obviously it is doing its job, it's cooling down. But uh, anyways, yeah, that's it. So I put the inverter, I checked to see, but obviously there was no room to put batteries on this side. So my furnace is under me here. My hot water tank is on this side, under, on, just on the other side of this wall. So there, I couldn't even use any more space in here. So the inverter sit over here. It's fairly heavy too, so it's kind of good on this side. Um, it's probably it's probably almost 100 pounds, right? It's uh, Like I said, it's 3,000 watts, so it's a big inverter. Um, what else can I tell you about it? It's obviously a um, pure sine wave inverter, right? You don't want anything but a pure sine wave. So what I did is when I mounted it, um, I don't know how well you're, you can see that down there, guys, but it's actually lifted up off the carpet and um, it's on a, a piece of sheet steel. So there's a one inch space on, between the sheet steel and the carpet. In case this thing gets hot or whatever, um, it's on a steel. And then secondly, there's a, there's a gap underneath that. It's kind of hard to see. Um, I was going to cut the carpet out, uh, but I, so far I haven't even, haven't even uh, felt a need for it. So, But so guys, I think, oh yeah, and then you can see the DC DC charger. I cut a hole in the bottom here, because those are the cooling fans, or the cooling fins there. So I thought, you know what, with the air moving through here, or whatever, better cooling. So I made a hole here, that way you can breathe too. So let me put the door back down. And yeah, and then I put a latch right there. So when I'm in trans, or when I'm out moving around, then I'll just make that, I'll lock that. But I'm in there so often. So I really haven't decided what I'm going to do with this guy. I was just going to mount him right there. But yeah, you can see right now it says it's 20 degrees and it's set for 28 degrees. So at 28 degrees, those two fans come on. All right, guys. So that is basically it for the electrical installation. I'm not done yet. Like I said, I have a display, which is, uh, oh, this camper is an absolute disaster right now. I got stuff everywhere. Look at this mess. So this is the display, guys, that... Um, will come off that unit in there. But, uh, so I got I have to have an HDMI cable from here over to here. And that will just almost like my uh, phone with Bluetooth, but that'll be mounted there and I'll be able to see, <laughs> I gotta do a better job. Sorry guys, I just start blabbering on. And I, my mind's going hundred miles an hour. I'm like a squirrel, you know, butterfly, squirrel. Um, so the display will be up on the wall here. So I'll be able to just look at it and say, yep, this is what's going on with the batteries and solar panel and all that kind of stuff. But I can do that in a little bit. It's not like I need to, to do that right now. I can get on the road and, and cut that in and then just pick up an HDMI cable to go basically follow those one out cables, go all the way around. So I'll probably need a, a 20 foot cable, probably 25 by the time I curl up and around. But anyways, guys, that's, uh, that's it for the whole electrical installation that I've done. Oh, I guess I could turn the, uh, so there's my inverter switch. So that's, I can either turn that inverter on from down there or I can turn it on from up here. So that's the inverter now, the inverter's on. You can see it's saying welcome and it's saying everything's normal. And let me put my glasses on. It's saying it's 121 volts. It says 13.3 volts inverter mode. It's on inverter mode. So it says AC is abnormal. That's because it's, there's no AC coming into the camper right now, right? So it's saying it's, on, it's running on batteries. If I plug in anything, if I plug it into the generator or outside power, it, I don't have to do nothing with the inverter. It just automatically switches itself over and then it goes into charging mode. So then all of a sudden it becomes a charger and allows the rest of the campers to still have 120 volts. So right now that inverter's on and I'm using 120 volts or there is 120 volts on the camper. There's my GFI uh, plug. You can see it's lit up right there. Um, so there's 120 volts now on the camper. <clears throat> so 
I'm going to, uh, what I tell you about a mess? Um, I still, these are the door switches for those lights and all that kind of good stuff. So, <laughs> sorry guys, I'm probably all over the place, but uh, as you can tell, I've been uh, doing a lot of projects lately and uh, everything from the gas can now that is done and, and everything else I've done, you know, so. So that's it again. There's a last picture of the uh, the compartment there. So I'm gonna put the floor, which is up there, back on here and I'll be able to hang my clothes back up again. And I just gotta put the outside door back on. I filled in all the grooves so uh, water can't come in. Hey guys, um, I just noticed by editing, which is what I'm doing right now, um, I'm just in the in the shop here, uh, lunchroom editing, that there's some things that might be a little deceiving here, so I'm just gonna make a couple things clear. Um, number one, the, the fuse that sits on the top of the battery, um, the terminal fuse, it's actually a 200 amp fuse. Um, the one that's on the top that actually feeds um, uh, through the distribution to the disconnect and then down across to feed the inverter. It's a 300 amp fuse. Uh, when I ordered them off Amazon, they didn't have a 200 amp fuse. Now that's a 3000 watt inverter. <clears throat> so potentially if I put it to its max, it can actually draw from the 12 volt system 250 amps. I'll never ever use it. I don't plan on running my AC off of it or anything like that. The reason why I went up to that big of a, like I said, that big of an inverter because I wanted the one that becomes a charger. And they didn't, if you didn't have anything 3000 watt or above, it didn't come with a built-in charger. It was just a normal inverter. I wanted a bypass inverter. I wanted to have the charger in it. So I went to a 3000, not wanting to use 3000 watts of power, just to make sure here. Um, when I come off my batteries to the system itself, I want to use four aught cables. Um, again, I couldn't locate four aught cables. So I'm just going to keep my eye on the road. I only need six feet of it. So, and I got the lugs already with me. So if I come across it, I'll just stop and make all those jumpers. And then the pieces that go from the batteries up to the disconnect. Yeah. So like, you know, I'm running two lock cables, which I think off the top of my head, it's about 175 amps, maybe 180 amps. Now don't forget that's continuous load. So even if I ran right now, 300 amps through those cables, I mean, for the length of time, if it does happen, I'm not going to hurt those cables. So I'm not, I'm not worried about that at all. A prime example, I worked at the salt mine. So we got these big, massive motors. On 600 volts, we had a, a motor that's 500 horsepower. So 600 volts, 500 horsepower is 500 amps. Of course, the wires go in, in the tap box on the outside of the motor to the windings. We're number eight wire. <laughs> so it's a number eight wire. This motor never shuts off. It runs 24 seven. And like I said, it's a 500 horse motor at 600 volts. It's 500 amps. And it's run number eight wires inside the, in the tap box. And there was uh, three of them feeding the motor windings. And it's just like, okay, you got three number eight wires, uh, which are 40 amps rated for, yet they're feeding a 500 horse motor. So for as much of the time, if I was going to be drawing some high currents, it'd be a for short period. There's no way a two hot cable. Anyways, so just to, just so you guys know that. So I don't want to make this video any longer than I have to. So if you guys have any questions, like I said, uh, throw them in there and maybe, maybe even soon I'll do a, a question and answer um, period. But anyways, all right, guys, back to the video. That's it for now. I uh, appreciate you following me and uh, checking out my stuff. And if you have any comments, feel free to leave them, guys. I, I enjoy, I may not get back to every comment. I try to, to get back, but um, sometimes I just get too busy, as you can tell. So anyways, guys, like always, don't forget, be good, be kind, be careful, and we'll talk to you real soon. Bye.